Felix here. Your government wants you to think there is nothing to see here. However, Goldman's put out a statement today saying Credit Suisse may need $8 billion. Jeffrey says they may need $9 billion. The trouble is Credit Suisse market cap is $11 billion. It doesn't take a genius to figure out. Therefore, raising that money is going to be pretty hard because what, are they going to sell like 80-90% of the business? Uh, that's going to be fairly hard to achieve. So what is really happening here? Is it the cataclysm? Is it the financial crisis uh, to come? Well, let's run through it. Let's go through the details and the facts here. I'll share them with you. Of course, none of not following is financial advice. I know you love a good disclaimer. Like you like a good scarf, right? The two things are probably why people tune in or mainly Winston, I suspect. A credit Swiss faces a capital shortfall as much as 8 billion francs, says Goldman Sachs. Jeffrey's upstart to 9 billion. Um, the minimum hole is 4 billion francs. So why is that? Well, they've got to sell stuff. They have to raise funds to restructure and it isn't getting any easier. Why? Well, there is a forex market rigging case going on. Credit Suisse has been really good at one thing, being at the center of every scandal. Every other bank that was part of this class action trial has settled in 2017. Credit Suisse, Suisse didn't. Um, now, there won't be penalties or, or, or damages attached to this straight away, but there are 1,300 investment firms and government bodies that will are not part of this, but will likely start their own claims after it. Plus, all the individual members of this class action can make damage claims afterwards. So yeah, it's going to cost them some money. All the other banks paid $2.3 billion in 2017, one of the largest antitrust cases in history. Credit Suisse said, nah, let's kick the can down the road. And obviously now, as they need the money, it's really going to hurt them. Now, they do have some apparent interest for their securitization business, uh, which is uh, PIMCO, you might realize, no, no, as the fund manager people, Sixth Street and Centerbridge Partners. Uh, but not only is Credit Suisse a forced partner, but this business is very capital intensive. Now, capital just got more expensive because interest rates are going through the roof. So it isn't all that appealing. So they're not going to get as much money for it as they like. So a sale could, however, lead to the release of regulatory capital and some cash, potentially some cash. So really, the reason they're selling this is because it needs a lot of capital. If they can free it up, it would make their regulatory compliance a little easier as they tank. Stock looks like this. Now, for some reason, I see headlines saying Credit Suisse bounces back. Really? Where? It's just one of these little... You see, you have most dips in the world. Don't go down in one line. You have these little rebounds, and that's what we're experiencing right now. But given that market cap is market capitalization, I don't know if you can see that down here in the right. No, you can't. I'm blocking it for you. Apologies. You have to take my word for it. Or can I make it bigger? No, you can't. You can't see it. Uh, but anyway, it's 11.8, 11.1 billion at present. So if you need at a minimum 4 billion, probably more like 5, 6, 7, 8, worst case 9 billion, how do you raise that? Well, you can't really, can you? Um, so you have to sell the family silver, which is what they're doing, the Mandarin Oriental in Zurich uh, to be. And you're basically left with a, a, a bit of a business. You're left with massive dilution for shareholders who will loathe you forever after. And then you hope somehow you turn this ship around, given their record of uh, destroying capital. I'm not particularly holding my, my breath on that one. This is the history of the Credit Suisse share price since 1996. Uh, it doesn't look brilliant, does it? They had some brief, you know, 2000, pre-2007 financial crisis hit, and they've never actually recovered. They're below the 2009 lows. I mean, that's really staggering. Uh, 2012, 2016, all, the, all of these market crashes, they are below that. So would I touch this with a barge pole? No, not even a very, very long one. I'm not going to participate in any any gambles, any trades, any investment uh, in Credit Suisse here. Uh, now, however, is this going to kick off the next financial crisis? Well, if they can't raise the funds, here is what's going to happen. 
They're going to get money from the Swiss government. If the Swiss government hasn't got enough money, then they're going to get money from the European Central Bank. Why? Because behind all of this, there are trillions of dollars of credit derivatives, which nobody fully understands except for a handful of odd-looking traders. And um, no government's going to risk that. They're not gonna. They're not gonna do that. This is this bit. This thing is way bigger than Lehman's, um, and and the whole derivative business has gotten way bigger since. So, uh, they will get bailed out, which I suppose is something. But you know, there is also, let me show you this, the the the, the everything bailout is what's going on at the moment, right? Germany has just put out two hundred billion euros to fight inflation. Uh, France is spending 100 billion euros to fight inflation. I don't know if anybody else sees the irony in spending money to fight inflation. It does the opposite. Um, but anyway, they're bailing out their energy markets. Uh, soon they're going to be bailing out most of their industry. Uh, they will then likely be bailing out uh, and, and, and sort of upping you know, unemployment benefits and everything else. So an enormous amount of money is going to go out the door. Enormous amount of debt is going to get piled up. And that on top of all the loony spending during the last crisis, all the quantitative easing, um, Headlines out today, the European Central Bank, that they, they wanted to raise rates big because they want to fight inflation, but they're about to really fall into a recession. So who raises interest rates in a recession, right? Uh, lunatics, they probably won't do that many more. So how do you ever get out of this cycle of money printing, stimulus, piling up debt? That's who's to say. At some point, something breaks, especially if interest rates do go higher. Um, to me, this is at present the chart that sort of sums up the market risk. And I'm not, you know, I'm not a perma bear or anything like that. I buy, I buy good stocks every week, continue to. Uh, but this right here shows you the downgrades of earnings expectations for the third quarter of this year. And if you take out energy, because energy has really lifted everything, right? Because oil is making more money. But that drop here is starts there and is down here. So this is basically the expected earnings downgrade of S&P 500 shares. So tell me that this is going to be a good earnings season. And the next one, right, as, as kind of uh, energy inflation really works its way through, especially in, in, in Europe, and, and the whole recession kicks off properly. Um, I, I don't really see it. So what's going to turn the ship around? The Fed. Central banks turning around and stopping the rate hikes and starting quantitative easing, money printing. Why on earth would they do that, you wonder, for one very good reason, that the bond market might seize up like it has done in the UK. And when it does, uh, they have to step in. They haven't got a choice. So they have to start buying government bonds again because the Fed used to be the biggest buyer of government bonds. They're gone. The Chinese are not buying. The Japanese are not buying because the yen is crazy. Uh, so who's left? right? Private sector. Is that enough? I doubt it with the stimulus to come. So there we are. Um, there is some positive news though. We're up 109% on our options portfolio. Isn't that lovely? Um, I'm sure you're rejoicing for my wins. Um, but no, seriously, I'll, I'll show you what it looks like. 109% up. Um, here are all the trades, October, September, October, August. Uh, here are all the trades from January to the end of August. And we have a pretty simple, pretty solid protocol that I've developed over many years sort of coming out of the banking world that has made me this money this year and it's also made me very similar returns over the previous years and it continues to deliver and I teach it I've taught it to about two and a half thousand students so far to learn how to build that extra income stream and spend literally about three hours a week trading give us a call at felixfriends.org slash coaching you can book a call there with us Provided you have at least a five-figure portfolio or six figures or seven figures or eight figures or nine figures. We've got one nine figures. We've got quite a few eight-figure people, actually. Uh, it's, a, so it's a community of people who really want to thrive, who want to build that extra income, who want to be free, who want to be doing what they want to be doing in life rather than, you know, uh, sitting at a, at a desk all day long doing something that they're, they're told to do. Uh, so check it out. Felix Schwanzer.org slash coaching, uh, five figures up. If you're not quite there yet, but the five figures brilliant amazing i love it when people start it's the most important time to start and get started with a good foundation if you add an extra income stream to that you'll get there like way 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 faster so how do we do that uh, felix runs log slash options it's a pre-recorded program it's 100 lessons you get to watch me trade live every week i ping you when i do all my master options um Portfolio trades every week. So check it out. Coupon code is freedom. And that expires literally today. Felix Schwanz.org slash options is where to go. If you enjoy these slightly, you know, 
ranty macro updates, then uh, I'd love it if you let me know down below. Uh, let me know what you think is going to happen with Credit Suisse, bailout or not. And I appreciate you watching. See you on the next one.